You probably already know this about me, but just in case, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I love making full screen animations in Apple Motion. When I have a client that gives me the creative freedom to make something fun and funky in motion, it is just my happy place. But what you may not know is that I don't stop there. I like to export these full screen animations as QuickTime files and then bring them into Final Cut Pro and add so many different sound effects to them to really bring them to life. So today, I thought I'd give you 10 tips for using sound Sound effects with your animations in Final Cut Pro. We're going to be using some animations from one of my favorite clients, ABC Fine Wine and Spirits. Side note, if you're into wine or cocktails, you're going to love their YouTube channel. I will link to it down below. All right, let's just dive right in to my first tip, which is not to try to do this stuff in motion. You're going to have so much more control in the Final Cut timeline than in the motion timeline. And actually, I just recently learned that the original version of motion didn't even have a timeline. So that just tells you how insufficient the motion timeline is for editing things like video and audio. You really should be doing this in Final Cut Pro. All right, my next tip for you is that you really don't need that many sound effects in my opinion. With the tricks I'm gonna show you today, I would say you really just need like a good jet engine sound, a couple of whooshes, a whip sound effect, and a pop sound effect. And you can do a lot if you're creating these types of animations with just those few effects. My next tip for you is that Final Cut has these sound bites and many, many more for free if you know where to look. If you wanna access these sound effects for free, just head up to the Final Cut Pro menu and select download additional content and then follow the instructions and look for other updates available. Once you've downloaded these files, head on over to the photos, videos, and audio sidebar and click on sound effects. And you'll see there's a lot of different sound effects and even music cuts here. To sort the sound effects from the music, I would sort by time. And then all your quick sound effects are right here at the top. Now let's go ahead and add in our first sound effect into our timeline under our animation. My next tip for you is to solo that sound effect. So you're not getting distracted by any music or talking while you try to adjust the placement and sound of that sound effect. So I'm gonna hit option S to mute everything else and just focus on this sound effect here. Now in the end, you're probably gonna to wanna to reduce the levels on a lot of your sound effects. And we're gonna talk more about that later, but for now, you're gonna to wanna to leave your sound effects loud and proud so you can really focus on making them match the actual motion in your animation. So now that I've got my sound effect in here, I'm just gonna arrow over frame by frame and try to time this out. So what I'm really trying to do is get this sound effect to match the motion of this text that is popping in, extruding, and then moving up in the Y position. So I'm gonna arrow through frame by frame, and then let's compare that to our whoosh sound effect. So the challenge I'm having, even just looking at this sound effect, is that it kind of fades in here. It gains speed, and then it's loud, and then tails off. But my animation, doesn't do that, it pops on. So my next tip for you is that you don't have to use the sound effect in its entirety. Go ahead and trim it up as you see fit to match your motion. So in this case, like I said, the text is popping on. So I don't want this fade in on my sound effect. I'm gonna cue it up to right before the text pops in. And then I'm going to slide my sound effect over so the playhead aligns with where that sound effect really picks up. And then I'm just gonna trim the end of the sound effect. Let's move a little bit further down in this same animation. And you'll see that I have all of these flavor profiles popping in with little graphic circles behind them. My next tip for you is to go ahead and stack and combine multiple sound effects to really match what you're doing because for each one of these little bullet points, there's like two things happening. So I'm gonna bring in this whip sound effect and I'm going to solo this one. And again, I'm gonna fine tune the placement by just maneuvering frame by frame. And that feels good, but I think we could do a little bit more. So I'm going to reach for my next sound effect, which is this pop sound. Now I'm going to mute everything else but these two clips by selecting both of them and hitting option S. And now doesn't that add a little bit something extra to this animation? I'm going to trim this second sound effect here and I'm going to copy and paste it for all of my bullets.
My next tip is all about changing the sound of an existing sound effect by modifying the pitch. So for this next animation, I have a slice of lime sliding in and then a little bit of lime juice squirting off of it. Let's first focus on the lime sliding in. I'm gonna take a jet sound effect. And I do feel like I have the timing right, but it's a little bit high pitched for my taste. So I'm gonna select this sound effect here in my timeline. Let's head on up to the audio inspector and under equalization, we're gonna hit this icon here to open up this mixer. And I'm going to dial up the bass on this sound effect and dial down the higher pitches. And I like that a lot better. Now let's draw our attention to our little lime juice squirts here. I'm gonna take this bubble pop sound effect and figure out the placement. And that's okay, but I think we could do something a little bit better. So I'm gonna reach for the pitch effect in my effects browser, drop that on here, and let's crank up the amount all the way. And I like that a lot better. So let's listen to that back. Before we move on, if you feel like you're learning something in Final Cut Pro, or you like what you're seeing with these Apple Motion animations and you wanna learn more, check out my courses at jenjager.com. All right, let's keep it going. Now let's focus on this next animation. It's a map with a part of Mexico highlighted. You can see I've got a camera effect on this animation where there's a fast zoom in and then it slows down again. I really wanna add a sound effect on that accelerated zoom in. I'm gonna add in this whoosh sound effect to try to align with that camera move. It's pretty good, but I think the timing could be a little bit better. So tip number eight, I'm gonna hit Command R to open my retiming menu and let's slow this down a little bit. Now that's obviously impacted the placement of my sound effect, which leads me to tip number nine, which is to use markers and nudging to get your placement just right. So what I'm gonna do is play my animation back and find the spot where the camera makes that hard landing in speed, right there. And I'm going to add a marker here. Now I'm just going to select my sound effect and I'm going to use the comma and period keys to align the peak of that sound effect with that marker. That should do it. All right, let's move on to my last animation and my 10th tip. So for this animation, I've got a thumbnail that pops into frame when our friend Faith here mentions another video. So let me just arrow through frame by frame. The thumbnail comes up from the bottom of the frame, reaches its peak on the Y value, and then pops down. So I'm gonna reach for that whip sound effect again, play with my placement. And that feels okay, but I think I can make it match a little bit better if I, tip number 10, reverse this sound effect. So I'm going to select it, head on over to my retiming menu and select reverse clip. There's no shortcut for that unless you've personally assigned one. And now I'm going to use my nudge tools to play with the placement again. And that is a very subtle difference, but it makes a little bit more sense for the sound effect to be going this way because as you can see, the end of the motion is very abrupt. And now so is the shape of my waveform. These are the kind of like really detailed nuanced things that I think just like bring your stuff up to another level. All right, so my last tip is kind of a bonus tip maybe tip number 11 we can call it, which is to adjust all of your levels in relation to any sound bites or voiceovers or your music as well. A good rule of thumb, in my opinion, is that the longer the sound effect, the lower the level should be. So let's go back to that animation with the lime. And remember, we've got our jet engine and our modified pop. So in my mind, the jet engine level should be lower than the pop sound effect. So not every sound effect should be at the same level volume wise in your project. There are some sound effects like this bubble pop that I think should be loud and proud and draw attention. And then there's other sound effects like this jet engine that the viewer should more feel like in their gut as opposed to hear with their ears, if that makes sense. So I hope these tips were helpful for you in leveling up your existing motion animations. I hope that this brings a whole new life to all the projects that you're working on. You guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Thanks to everyone who watches to the end. I picked out some other videos. I'll see you guys again.